A nonprofit builder, Holy Ground Tiny Homes, owes $6 million to 189 customers after failing to build their Colorado houses while spending money on race cars, real estate, and lavish trips to Las Vegas. It's kind of sad to see like so many people scamming and like just like blatantly scamming. So let's get into it. A convicted felon and home builder in Colorado owes six million to customers who never received the tiny homes they purchased. Ba 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 ba. Matthew Sirwash, the president and CEO of Holy Ground Tiny Homes and Revelations in Christ Ministries, filed for bankruptcy in October of 2022. According to a trustee assigned by the U.S. Bankruptcy Court in Denver, Sawash owes money back to 189 customers who forked over tens of thousands of dollars each to the man they thought would build them a house. According to an 81-page report filed last week in Denver, the nonprofit company allegedly spent more than 400 k to purchase and repair race cars and other vehicles, in addition to spending $35,000 on real estate purchases in Colorado and Alaska, another $32,000 was spent on meals, and $55,000 on travel to Las Vegas. According to the court filing, just about $10,000 of the logged travel expenses appear to be related to the delivery of the tiny homes. So Walsh's lawyers have claimed the Vegas trip was part of an employee appreciation benefit, The seemingly reckless spending spree occurred between October 2020 and August 2022 as the company was collecting deposits from customers for tiny homes that were never built. In October 2022, the company filed for bankruptcy and NASA Wash has until the 22 of September to submit a plan for how he will turn the company around, which uh, he won't at all. In a video Sir Wash posted to his company's website last month, the owner explained that his company was not going out of business, but was making efforts to reorganize and start over again after its build calendar got to be way, way too big. He employed at least 25 workers at a factory in Arapahoe County, Colorado, who fell drastically behind the production schedule due to overcommitment and supply chain issues. So Wash claimed that only about 40% of what's being said in the media is true, and he cannot control the other 60%, but invited customers and prospective buyers to come see the company's operation in full swing in an effort to re-establish trust. He added that the company is offering a new option for financing the purchase of a tiny home that can be done via a risk-free third-party financing company so that potential buyers feel more comfortable assuming the risk of purchase. As for the customers who are currently owed tiny homes, so Wash says they will all be made whole eventually. Every customer will be taken care of entirely, he said. Which, like, what? Like, here's the thing. And, like, I don't think there's, like, anything that, like, kind of, like, ticks me off more when you say, like, ah, yes, I will take care of my former customer's but I'm still going to be getting new customers giving me money where I can't give them the tiny home that they want because I'm still having to take care of my former customers. So you want new money coming in to pay off former customers or previous customers, like giving them money in a sense, right? So basically, what you're kind of describing is pretty much like a Ponzi scheme because he needs new money in probably to use that money to pay for the cost of building those tiny homes that he owes and he's basically never going to really catch up. Like, he's basically in a situation from what I see that he has to get new money coming in or else everything collapses because there is no money to actually make the homes for the previous customers, the current customers that he has. Oof. Jolie Lofsteft, the attorney assigned to the bankruptcy investigation, said so Wash's business would need to almost double the sales price of the tiny homes it marketed. 
The company operated at a significant loss for at least two years. According to the report, in 2021, it spent $4.4 million on materials to construct homes that were then sold for just $2.6 million. You took a, a nearly $2 million loss. And in 2022, it spent $5.3 million on materials for homes sold for just $2 million. That's a $3.3 million loss. Holy crap. That is horrible. Last year, just after Holy Ground Tiny Homes filed for bankruptcy, Samara Nate, then a 24-year-old mother of three-year-old of a three-year-old, said she was really hoping so Walsh didn't turn out to be a fraudster. Nate lived out of her car for a while with her child as she waited for the tiny home she paid $64,000 for had not been delivered. Which, by the way, if you stumble upon this and you have some sort of interest in a tiny home, instead of going for, like, a builder, which, like, I understand wanting a builder to, like, make it, like, legitimate and all that kind of stuff, right? But $64,000 is still really expensive. To me, at least for like a temporary situation until you really get like a solidified plan, instead of like living inside your car, why not buy like a really cheap piece of land, buy a, not a shipping container, but buy a shed like a really nice shed from like Home Depot or Lowe's that's like of decent size because they got some pretty big ones have it shipped there right so you could have like a livable sized place for pretty darn cheap comparatively that you could at very least lay down in right that is like a little bit safer than or at least a little bit more comfortable than inside a car you know at least to me, in my mind, because you could probably do that for like under 10k with shipping and whatnot, and at the very least have a roof over your head, lay down in like a sleeping bag or something, at least for like a temporary thing, like your temporary home, and you could probably make that work for at least a little bit. It's super stressful, I mean like I have no other choice but to just trust that he's going to come through, because I don't even want to think about losing that money, she told KDVR at the time. Nate had attempted to request a refund by showing up at the company's warehouse, but she was given a promissory note instead, insisting that her home would be delivered by October 14th, a full six weeks after when it was initially scheduled to be delivered. Yeah, and basically, it was just like a constant, like, scam, 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 like, no, oh, no, yeah, later on, you'll get it. Oh, no, something happened, an issue, later on, you'll get it. But basically, the guy's like a scumbag, pretty much. Let's see. Yeah, this guy's just like a scumbag, basically stealing money. And to me, what this guy is uh, pretty much doing is pretty much basically a Ponzi scheme at this point, right? And, like, this is the situation that is kind of, like, weird because he might have started this company as, like, a legitimate company, right? But, like, okay, so, I guess a good way to put it is, like, to acquire and fulfill the product offering to your customer, you want it to be cheaper, right, than what you charge for it, so that you can make a profit, right? So, let's say that I want to make money as a company, right? Let's say that I sell you a $20 item. I need it to cost me to get you, as a customer, like 10 bucks, like maximum, to justify doing that to be able to make a profit, so you got to like 
make it make sense. But this guy is like building these homes that are like costing him like a hundred dollars, right? As like an example, but he's only selling them for like 20 bucks, right? That's not a business. You're going to run money, like run out of money no matter what by doing that. So he was never going to really have money as time went on because where is the money going to be coming from? Like, again, he was basically, from what it seems like, he was basically getting more and more customers in to basically build the previous homes each and every time, right? So basically, like, let's say that he brought in like a million dollars, right? Well, those homes cost like four million dollars to, you know, make. Well, now he's like negative three million. So what he has to do, because that's probably all in debt, he has to go and get more money coming in to pay the minimums on that debt and then also basically pay for the raw materials and the labor costs to keep building homes. Like, it's just like a vicious cycle. Like You're not able to like make a legitimate business, make profit, whatever, right? Like for example, let's say that you sell like a $2,000 product as like a business, right? But it only costs you like $1,000 to acquire a customer, right? That means you got like a $1,000 profit. You could keep on selling that product over and over and over again because you know it's going to cost you a thousand bucks, but you're going to make a thousand bucks, right? You're going to make a thousand dollar profit each and every time. So you're going to keep on doing that over and over and over and over and over again, and you're just going to repeat the process, and you're going to try to keep your cost the exact same so that you could keep making that 1K per sale, right? I, one, I think building like tiny homes is like a bad business model to begin with because there's so much labor, labor cost, raw materials, etc like marketing, all that sort of stuff, like by the end of it, like are you even making money? Obviously for him, no. But he was also spending whatever money he brought in too. So it's just like, it's such a bad business that he was doing. Like, it's, like It was such a bad business that even though it probably did not initially start off as like a Ponzi scheme, it basically became a Ponzi scheme just because of how bad the business actually was. Which is kind of crazy when you think about it. It's like, oh wow, my business is doing so bad that I'm basically turning the company into a Ponzi scheme for it to simply still barely function. Like, what? <laughs>